Hey, Steve Zick here. Welcome back to Pokesu Channel and the Guitar Ladder System. Today's video is uh, a review of a 1949 Gibson L50. And uh, I was lucky enough to have my 21-year-old daughter come over last night and visit me for Father's Day. She's Her name's Lila. She's 21. She's extremely talented. She's got just a beautiful, beautiful voice. She She's a songwriter. Um, very, very artistic. I love her so much. Um, anyway, I was lucky she came over last night, bought, bought myself and uh, one of my friends uh, really, really nice uh, vegetarian dinner. It was just great. But anyway, I handed, I, I go, you want to see my latest vintage guitar? She's like, yeah, you know, I have a lot of guitars. So I, I put this 49 Gibson uh, you know, L50 in her hands, and she just started improvising on it, and making up stuff, and singing, and oh my God, she, Lila has kind of a 50s vibe to her look and her voice, and uh, she just she sounded so great on this guitar. But, and uh, the interesting thing about a guitar like this, and this is the, the L50 is a solid carved top, which is pretty amazing, you know, and uh, it's a laminate back and sides. And it's a, this guitar has a presence. I mean, every time I look at it, or sometimes I'll just lay it down flat and look at it, you know, it just, or when I play it, obviously, it, it just has a presence and a vibe. And arch tops is probably my strongest area of expertise because I love them. And I've bought and sold a lot of arch tops the last 40 years. So there's no, there's no substitution for that experience of having, you know, vintage, Gibson L5s come through my hands and ears, you know, L7s, Epiphone, you know, arch to old Epiphone made in New York, master built, the real ones, not the, the new Epiphone master built are, are pieces of junk. I can't believe Epiphone even came out with their guitar. They, 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 they're just dead. Anyway, you know, I've, I've had Strombergs, D'Angelico's. I've, I've sold a lot of arch top guitars. I consider myself an expert at arch top guitars. Um, and I, I used to think that the, uh, the old Epiphone guitars, I know people are thinking, why don't you play something? The old Epiphone guitars were the best, but you know, it, it, I've got some interesting information. But anyway, th this, this is the L50, and I, I think it's still waking up. It sounds a lot better than when I first got it. Anyway, um, like like the Gibson L5 is it was a nice arch top. They're overbuilt. They have that kind of dry sound. They're just overbuilt. The Gibson L7 is a better guitar. Um, and I used to think that Epiphone made the best arch tops in the world. And, and Epiphone does make it. The older Epiphones are great guitars. I used I used to have an Epiphone. I used to have an Epiphone Triumph Regent that sounded amazing. That's the cutaway Epiphone, and it was a '53. I was born in '53, so that was kind of interesting. But anyway, um, the, some of the old Epiphones sound really great because the, the luthiers that worked for Epiphones in the, you know, in the in the 40s and 50s and, and 30s, uh, a lot of those luthiers were from Europe and, and they were hanging around Chicago and New York at the time and worked for Epiphone. They had backgrounds carving violin tops, you know, making cellos, upright basses. So they understood the physics of design of an arch top and they understood about violin voicing even for a guitar and uh, you know but like and I love simple statements Chet Atkins said every guitar is different boy that that, that there's a lot more to that thought than meets the eye because it's really true every guitar has a little bit different sound the wood dried differently it was different air different nutrients in the soil maybe the wood laid around the forest a little longer maybe it fell to the bottom of the lake like the sinker mahogany that you know, Groon sells those old, those Martins that have 200 year old sinker mahogany. You got the tree, you know, that was the highly flamed mahogany uh, tree that fell down hundreds of years ago and was brought up the, the gully. Um, but there's just a lot of variations. But to me, I, I really love this guitar. Now, it, it doesn't quite have, and again, every Epiphone archtop isn't going to sound the same. My 53 Epiphone Triumphs sounded really good. 
it had a lot of bloom and it had just a tremendous reverb. The reverb on this Gibson L50 is not as intense, but, but sometimes less is more because you get more focus. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that every guitar has its own magic. It's kind of like people. Everybody has a little bit different um, personality, etc. So I am I really love this guitar because it just has a uh, has a focus. And it has its own kind of reverb. Uh, but it has this kind of, uh, you know, tone to where it's just extremely focused, but very vintage sounding, very old. You know, this is 70 year old wood. And again, the Gibson L50 is a solid carved top. So, so in my mind, uh, it's a great. It's a great value. I just love it, you know, but I don't the, the, the place I got it from. Um, he mentioned that the guy had a couple guitars he bought from this guy and i guess this uh i guess this guitar wasn't really played that much so the more it's played it's going to open up even more but i'm really happy with it i was recently going to buy an l7 but the guy's kind of playing games with me and i'm just like you know whatever man you know i don't know i, I can't stand to deal with mickey mouse type people like if there's a certain price that, 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 that is, will work for you, just freaking tell me, you know. Don't make me go back and forth and make up this thought of, oh, I got this other guy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this is a, a review of the Gibson uh, L50. Really sweet guitar. It doesn't have as much reverb as like some of the older Epiphones, but that lack, it does have some reverb, and that gives the guitar more, more focus. It's got an absolutely beautiful, chunky mid-range and mid-bass and the magic of a great archtop guitar, uh, you know, lies greatly in, in that mid bass and mid range. And I love the sound of this guitar. I love playing it. It's just got a vibe. And my daughter just sounded so great singing and playing. And then we were singing together. She, she just started making up something and she has a really nice idea for kind of finding a little surprise in her melody lines. And so I started singing and she was singing and we, and we had a nice, nice hang. I really appreciate her coming over. She's very, very busy with school and work and everything, you know, but uh, I've got three kids. I love them. Uh, they're all, they're all very, very different, but they all are into music and uh, it's, it's really neat, you know, but anyway, the Gibson L50 in, in my, is a tremendous guitar. And, and the fact that the back and sides are laminate to me is a plus because laminate wood has a certain open transparent quality to it in fact when tau farlow was endorsing for gibson they they asked tau farlow what you know what kind of guitar do you want to make for the tau farlow model do you want a solid wood guitar like an l5 or super 400 or he goes i want a laminate guitar because i like the open transparent tone of it you know so the the, the the little rap about solid wood solid wood versus laminate there's a lot more to it than meets the eye but anyway this this l50 is a solid carved top it's a 49 the fact that I now own a 49 Gibson guitar, I just think is tremendous. I think, it, I think it's a great investment and I just love playing it. And I used to run ads years ago in Vintage Guitar Magazine. I would say, you know, art and investments you can play. Uh, I don't advertise in that magazine anymore, but I think that's really true, you know. Do I, do I think that vintage guitars are worth the money? It depends on what kind of money you're talking about. I, I look at what some of the, you know, some of the vintage guitars are going for and to me it's ridiculous you know i don't really think i think if you look at like an like an old you know early 60s strat or late 50s strat and they go for big money um you know is is the sound and playability and all that worth the money i don't think so is it worth the money as an investment maybe if you get into it at the right price you know because of the rarity of it you know but uh I, I just, I, I, I like to find guitars that are a great value that aren't like, you know, 30, 40, 50 grand, you know. Um, and I, I've, I, fuck, I joke with people all the time. I, I, I drive an older car because it's a great car and I like the simplicity of it. It's a, I drive an 03 Honda. I've had Subarus and all kinds of cars, but my 03 Honda is 265 horsepower. It hauls, it hauls ass. 
But I like to drive up next to somebody in a $200,000 Lamborghini and say, hey, you know, I hate to tell you this, but on a trade, you're going to have to come with some cash. And if they're assholes, they look at me like I'm nuts. If they're cool, they usually laugh, you know, because because they like they, they know their car is worth 200 grand and mine's worth like five grand, you know. But I love my I used to think I used to joke. I used to think that, old you know, Hondas are like lawnmowers. But I'll tell you, man, Honda makes a great car. And, and my 03, my 03 Honda, I used to drive an, an older Nissan Maxima with a six cylinder engine. I think it was a 98. That's what that was one of the best six cylinder engines uh, ever made. And, uh, and that was 200 horse and it was fast. But my Honda is 265 horse. What does this have to do with a vintage guitar? Well, let me think if I can tie it in. Some of the older stuff just, just was made well, you know. The, the, the certain, certain products are made with, with the product in mind, not so much saving money, etc. But anyway, I just love this guitar. I love it. It makes me happy every time I look at it, every time I play it. And, and my daughter just sounded so beautiful on it. So, so to review this guitar, I give it a big, big thumbs up. I think it's a great value. Uh, I looked quite a bit. In like fact, I was actually looking for another arch top, and then I kind of ran into this and looked at some of the ones around, you know. This one seemed to be the cleanest, but uh, I, and, and it just, you know, every every guitar has its own music in it. Every guitar will teach you certain things, you know, and uh, I just love it. But yeah, Gibson L50, great value for the money. Like I said, I'm not too impressed by the newer Epiphone stuff, like the newer Epiphone arch tops. They just, they just kind of sound kind of dead. But, uh, you know, I used to think that the Epiphone, the older Epiphones were the best sounding arch tops in the world. But again, you have to take it on a guitar by guitar basis. Some of them really ring out, some don't. But, there, but if you don't, you know, some of the, the old 53 Epiphone Triumph region I used to have uh, had a tremendous reverb, kind of an analog woody reverb that almost seemed to make the guitar, that the tone as it left the guitar got more defined and better. And it, it was a beautiful guitar. Um, you know, but I sold it because that's what I do. And I think I had some bills I needed to take care of, you know, having three kids and, you know, expensive written HB, but, um, you know, non-attachment is one of the, I'm, I'm into metaphysics. I've been meditating for 38 years. I'm really into consciousness development and metaphysics, but the joke is, uh, non-attachment is one of the, one of the laws of the universe, but you know, the Buddha was not a guitar player. <laughs> Easy for him to have non-attachment. He didn't own guitars, right? But anyway, this guitar is just too cool. I just love it. And uh, it has a certain, you know. Has a certain focus and a certain quality from the old 70-year-old wood. You're not going to get that from, from the lore. You're not going to get that from anything. Nothing sounds as good as old wood, and uh, so I, I love this guitar. I even play it sometimes uh, in like, you know, like in Dad Gut. And I'm just using the. I'm just really excited I have a 49 Gibson. I, I really bought it more for my collection. If somebody wants to talk turkey and talk to me about it, I'm open to it. You know? But it just has a, that beautiful arch top sound. And the magic of an arch top is, you know, like with a dread, and I love a good dread. I've got a lot of them. But, you know, you get a lot, lot of sound with a dread, and you get some, some phase cancellations or certain notes cancel themselves out. Plus, when you get that big of a sound, you're not going to get the focus. So the magic, of, the magic of a great arch top is the focus. You get a tremendous focus in the mid range and the mid bass. And this guitar has kind of a light, kind of a light reverb.
So old Gibson L50? Hell yeah. And one thing I forgot to mention, what's interesting about this guitar, a lot of arch tops have an extra piece of wood here where, um, on the body where it, it sits on top of the guitar. A lot of guitars have an extra piece of wood under there. And, uh, but you know, this doesn't. It's just the neck actually sits right on top of the guitar. And I, I see that as a plus because it has more direct contact with the top of the guitar. Um, not saying that if you have a piece of wood there, that's bad, but you know, the sound has to travel through all that wood. So may, maybe you lose a little something, you know, but anyway, this guitar has a beautiful, beautiful tone. It's got, it's got kind of a soft V neck. I'm not real crazy about V necks, but this is kind of a soft V. It's not too bad. And the, the, the fretboard, the fretboard doesn't seem to have a hell of a lot of radius to it. It's got a little bit but it seems a little more, you know, flat than radius. I would prefer a little more radius, but it is what it is. It's a beautiful guitar. It sounds beautiful. You can hear the reverb better when I play slow. more for some reason in this area of the guitar. Now, I think this guitar, in fact, I don't think, I know, this guitar is still waking up because it just wasn't played much. The, the guy I got it from said he bought a couple guitars from this guy. He mostly played his other guitar, you know. But uh, it, I think the more I play it, the more it's going to wake up. It's gonna, the reverb will get a little bit more bloomy. <laughs> hear that it's a really neat guitar I just love it man anyway. sounds really really nice and dad gad too you know but anyway so yeah if this this uh, i do believe this has a solid oh i i don't believe i know it does it's got a solid carved top i'm sure it's probably spruce and uh i'm, I'm not sure exactly on the back and the sides it's pr probably maple probably laminate maple could be walnut but i think it's maple but yeah gibson l50 great guitar great value you know and i i, I just feel really good about owning a 49 gibson like I said, I, I, some of the best sounding arch tops I've ever played have been Epiphones. But a great, like I've said before, folks, a great guitar can come out of anywhere. It can say, it can say, you know, Del Taco on the headstock. I don't care who makes a guitar. A great guitar can come out of anywhere. But yeah, 49 Gibson, I feel really great about it as a guitar as well as an investment. Solid carved top. Needs to be played to age a little bit more. But yeah, it's got some interesting tone already. I don't haven't really played it that much. I, I might have played this guitar five hours so far. All right, nineteen forty nine Gibson L fifty. I give it a serious thumbs up. You know, they didn't, you know, the, the great vintage guitars, like I said a little earlier, I, I'm not the kind of guy where I, I, I don't feel good about spending 30, 40, 50 grand on a guitar. So I'm always looking for guitar values that are, you know, I didn't get this guitar dirt cheap by any means, but I, I paid a price where the person that I bought it from felt okay about it. I felt okay about it. It was a win-win situation. So I think the Gibson L50 is a really, really great guitar and just a joy to own. And it brings out it brings out a certain like I said my uh, my daughter kind of has a, a 50s vibe and kind of a 50s look to her eye and her face and her voice and she's she's really a great singer she's studying jazz at Fullerton College and uh, 
But yeah, it's really, really a great guitar. So uh, Gibson L50, serious thumbs up. Great vintage guitar, not too expensive. Can't go wrong. Take care.